the vertebral column is formed by a chain of median, unpaired and irregular bones called vertebrae. These vertebrae extend from the skull to the end of tail. The vertebral column is subdivided into five regions named according to the region of the body. Thus, the vertebrae are designated as cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral and caudal or coccygeal. The vertebral column is subdivided into five regions named according to the region of the body. Thus, the vertebrae are designated as cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral and caudal or coccygeal. The number of vertebrae is specific for each animal species and as well fairly constant in each region except the caudal region. For example, the vertebral formula of horse is cervical, 7, thoracic, 18, lumbar, 6, sacral, 5, and caudal, 15 to 22 vertebrae. Meanwhile, the formula in case of dog is cervical, 7, thoracic, 13, lumbar, 7, sacral, 4, and caudal. 20 to 23 vertebrae. Generally speaking, the vertebra has a typical structure as follows. Each vertebra consists of body, arch and some processes. The body and arch form together a bow nearing. The series of rings with ligaments uniting them enclose the vertebral kindale. The vertebral kindale contains spinal cord, its coverings and vessels. The body of the vertebra has a convex cranial and concave caudal extremities. The dorsal surface of the body is flattened and forms the floor of the vertebral ring. In some vertebrae, the ventral surface of the body has a ventral crest. In the thoracic region, the body presents two pairs of coastal facets at the extremities for articulation with parts of the heads of the two pairs of corresponding ribs. The vertebral arch consists of two lateral halves. Each half consists of a ventral pedicle and a dorsal lamina. The pedicle is cut cranially and caudally by vertebral notches. The notches of two adjacent vertebrae form intervertebral foramina for the passage of spinal nerves and vessels. The two laminae are plates, which unite with each other medially forming the roof of the vertebral ring at the root of spinous process. Regarding the processes of the vertebra, there are five types that include 1. Cranial and caudal articular processes project from the arch to the adjacent vertebrae. 2. Spinous process is dorsal. 3. Transverse processes are paired and arise from each side between the body and arch. 4. Mapillary processes between transverse and cranial articular processes on caudal thoracic and cranial lumbar vertebrae. 5. Accessory processes when found is between transverse and caudal articular processes. The cervical vertebrae are seven in number in all animals. The first cervical vertebrae is known as the atlas. The second is the axis, both of which are highly modified. About the peculiarities of each region of the vertebral column, we start from the cervical region. The cervical vertebrae are seven in number in all animals. The first cervical vertebra is known as the atlas. The second is the axis, both of which are highly modified. Atlas is the first cervical vertebra. It is a typical vertebrae where the body and spinous process are absent. It has a strong ring consisting of two lateral masses connected by dorsal and ventral tubercle. The atlas has cranial articular cavities for articulation with occipital condyles and caudal facets for the axis. 
the cranial cavities are concave and separated by one notch dorsally and one ventrally, while the caudal cavities are saddle-shaped laterally from each side. The transverse process or wing of Atlas forms the Atlantic fossa. It is perforated by three openings. Cranially, alar foramen and lateral vertebral foramen connected to each other by alar groove, and caudally the transverse foramen. To identify the atlas in ox, notice the absence of transverse foramen, while in case of do notice the absence of alar foramen, which is replaced by alar notch. The axis is a typical vertebra forming a pivot around with the atlas. The cranial extremity of body has the dense or a dentoid process for articulation with ventral arch of atlas and two rough depressions dorsally. The arch has lateral vertebral foramen. The transverse process is single and undivided with transverse foramen. The spinous process is very large and strong. Its free border is rough thickens caudally and is continued to the caudal articular processes by two ridges. In ox, the spinous process projects gradually caudal wards but terminating suddenly. The third, fourth and fifth are typical vertebrae, nearly similar in structure and have the following characteristics. 1. The body is long and has a median ventral crest. 2. The arch is perforated on either side by a foramen which communicates with the transverse foramen. 3. Articular processes are large, the cranial ones are directed dorsomedially while the caudal ones are ventrolateral. A crest connects the cranial and caudal articular processes of the same side on the fourth and fifth, while that of the third does not reach the cranial process. For the transverse process arises by two roots, one from the arch and the other from the body, between these is the transverse foramen through which vertebral vessels and nerve pass. The process divides laterally into cranial and caudal branches. The spinous process has the form of a low crest, which subsides caudally and is connected by ridges with the caudal articular processes. Characteristic features of the typical cervical vertebra as number 3, 4 and 5 include 1. A long body with a median ventral crest. 2. A transverse foramen on either side of the arch. 3. Cranial and caudal articular processes, directed dorsoimedially and ventrolaterally, respectively. 4. The transverse process arises by two roots one from arch and the other from body. It divides into cranial and caudal branches. 5. The spinous process has the form of a low crest, which subsides caudally connecting by ridges with caudal articular processes. Characteristic features of the sixth cervical vertebra include 1. The sixth cervical vertebra is shorter and wider than the fifth. 2. The caudal articular processes are shorter and thicker. Each is connected with the corresponding cranial one by a thick ridge. 3. Transverse process is divided into three branches, and the transverse foramen is present. 4. The ventral crest is absent or small. The seventh cervical vertebra is quite similar to the first thoracic vertebra. However the characteristic feature of the seventh cervical vertebra is that its body has a coastal facet on each side of the caudal articular surface of the body. Meanwhile, the first thoracic vertebra has similar coastal facets but in both of the cranial and caudal surfaces of the vertebral body. 
Common features of the thoracic vertebrae include, the body is short and the articular process is reduced. The arches are small, the caudal notches are relatively large and are often converted into foramina. Spinous process is well developed, increases gradually in length until the fourth, diminished until the fifteenth and then have the same length. The second spinous process is the most inclined, while the sixteenth is vertical. Summits of the fourth and fifth form the highest point of the back, i.e. known as the writhers. The transverse processes are short, thick and tuberous at the free end. Costal facets on the body cranial and caudal extremities. As well, costal facets are found on the transverse processes. These facets for the articulation with the head and tubercle of the corresponding ribs, respectively. The transverse processes of the last four to five bare mammillary processes. As mentioned before, the seventh cervical vertebra is greatly similar to the first thoracic vertebra. Please Notice that the first thoracic vertebra has also coastal facets but on both of the cranial and caudal surfaces of the vertebral body. Common features of thoracic vertebrae include, the body is short and the articular process is reduced. The arches are small, the caudal notches are relatively large and are often converted into foramina. Spinous process is well developed increases gradually in length until the fourth, diminished until the fifteenth and then have the same length. The second spinous process is the most inclined, while the sixteenth is vertical. Summits of the fourth and fifth form the highest point of the back i.e. known as the riders. The transverse processes are short, thick and tuberous at the free end. Coastal facets on the body cranial and caudal extremities. As well, coastal facets are found on the transverse processes. These facets for the articulation with the head and tubercle of the corresponding ribs, respectively. The transverse processes of the last four to five air mammillary processes. Common features of the thoracic vertebrae include, the body is short and the articular process is reduced. The arches are small, the caudal notches are relatively large and are often converted into foramina. Spinous process is well developed, increases gradually in length until the fourth, diminished until the fifteenth and then have the same length. The second spinous process is the most inclined, while the sixteenth is vertical. Summits of the fourth and fifth form the highest point of the back, i.e. known as the writhers. The transverse processes are short, thick and tuberous at the free end. Costal facets on the body cranial and caudal extremities. As well. Costal facets are found on the transverse processes. These facets for the articulation with the head and tubercle of the corresponding ribs, respectively. The transverse processes of the last four to five bare mammillary processes. Features of the last three thoracic vertebrae include, the sixteenth vertebra is typical but the spinous process is vertical. The seventeenth vertebra is typical but the spinous process inclines cranial wards. The eighteenth vertebra is typical but the spinous process inclines cranial wards, and the caudal pair of costal facets on the body is absent. The cranial pair is coming together or fused with those on the transverse processes. 
Features of the last three thoracic vertebrae include, the 16th vertebra is typical but the spinous process is vertical. The 17th vertebra is typical but the spinous process inclines cranial wards. The 18th vertebra is typical but the spinous process inclines cranial wards, and the caudal pair of costal facets on the body is absent. The cranial pair is coming together or fused with those on the transverse processes. The lumbar vertebrae are usually six in number, and have regional characteristics, expanded and elongated transverse processes. The articular processes are interlocking with each other. Cranial articular processes are fused with mammillary processes, and present dorsally concave surfaces. Caudal articular processes project from the arch with convex articular surfaces. Spinous processes resemble those of the last two thoracic, and are usually about equal in height. The lumbar vertebrae are usually six in number, and have regional characteristics, expanded and elongated transverse processes. The articular processes are interlocking with each other. Cranial articular processes are fused with mammillary processes, and present dorsally concave surfaces. Caudal articular processes project from the arch with convex articular surfaces. Spinous processes resemble those of the last two thoracic, and are usually about equal in height. The lumbar vertebrae are usually six in number, and have regional characteristics, expanded and elongated transverse processes. The articular processes are interlocking with each other. Cranial articular processes are fused with mammillary processes, and present dorsally concave surfaces. Caudal articular processes project from the arch with convex articular surfaces. Spinous processes resemble those of the last two thoracic, and are usually about equal in height. The lumbar vertebrae are usually six in number, and have regional characteristics, expanded and elongated transverse processes. The articular processes are interlocking with each other. Cranial articular processes are fused with mammillary processes, and present dorsally concave surfaces. Caudal articular processes project from the arch with convex articular surfaces. Spinous processes resemble those of the last two thoracic, and are usually about equal in height. The lumbar vertebrae are usually six in number, and have regional characteristics, expanded and elongated transverse processes. The articular processes are interlocking with each other. Cranial articular processes are fused with mammillary processes, and present dorsally concave surfaces. Caudal articular processes project from the arch with convex articular surfaces. Spinous processes resemble those of the last two thoracic, and are usually about equal in height. The sacral vertebrae are usually five in number, and have regional characteristics, on the lateral side of dorsal sacral foramina are series of tubercles representing the fused the transverse processes of sacral vertebrae forming the lateral sacral crest. The wings or lateral parts of the base are strong prismatic masses. The wing has an auricular surface for articulation with the wing of ilium. The ventral margin projects slightly forming the promontory of sacrum. Dorsal sacral foramina are found between each two vertebrae. 
The pelvic surface presents, 1-4 transverse lines indicate demarcation between vertebrae. 2 at the ends of those lines, there are pelvic, ventral, sacral foramina, which are larger than the dorsal ones. They transmit the ventral branches of sacral spinal nerves. The dorsal and pelvic sacral foramina communicate with the vertebral canal and are together resemble the intervertebral foramina. The sacral vertebrae are usually five in number, and have regional characteristics, on the lateral side of dorsal sacral foramina are series of tubercles representing the fused the transverse processes of sacral vertebrae forming the lateral sacral crest. The wings or lateral parts of the base are strong prismatic masses. The wing has an auricular surface for articulation with the wing of ilium. The ventral margin projects slightly forming the promontory of sacrum. Dorsal sacral foramina are found between each two vertebrae. The pelvic surface presents, 1-4 transverse lines indicate demarcation between vertebrae. 2 at the ends of those lines, there are pelvic, ventral, sacral foramina, which are larger than the dorsal ones. They transmit the ventral branches of sacral spinal nerves. The dorsal and pelvic sacral foramina communicate with the vertebral canal and are together resemble the intervertebral foramina. The sacral vertebrae are usually five in number, and have regional characteristics, on the lateral side of dorsal sacral foramina are series of tubercles representing the fused the transverse processes of sacral vertebrae forming the lateral sacral crest. The wings or lateral parts of the base are strong prismatic masses. The wing has an auricular surface for articulation with the wing of ilium. The ventral margin projects slightly forming the promontory of sacrum. Dorsal sacral foramina are found between each two vertebrae. The pelvic surface presents, 1-4 transverse lines indicate demarcation between vertebrae. 2 at the ends of those lines, there are pelvic, ventral, sacral foramina, which are larger than the dorsal ones. They transmit the ventral branches of sacral spinal nerves. The dorsal and pelvic sacral foramina communicate with the vertebral canal and are together resemble the intervertebral foramina.